You're watching NBA Now. We are recapping a 128-102 loss for the Boston Celtics to the Miami Heat. The Celtics came into this game down 0-2 in the Eastern Conference Finals. You had to win it. Not only do you lose, you get absolutely destroyed. 128-102. to uh, You lose by 26 points. Surprisingly, you out-rebound the Heat by 22 as we look at our box score here. 57-35 to uh, was the rebounding margin in this game. Uh, that's a shocking stat, quite frankly. Uh, in terms of assists, the Heat had one more assist. The Celtics as a team, and this was the big difference, shot 39% from the floor and 26% from three. The Heat shot over 54% from three, 56.8% from the floor. The Heat could not miss tonight. They had multiple contributors in this game. Gabe Vincent had one of the best games of his life. 29 points as we welcome in uh, the host of the Heat Report, Nick Roloff. Uh, Nick, you got to give Gabe Vincent a lot of credit because he struggled for the most part in Game 2. He had that huge shot to kind of seal the victory in Game 2. I think that gave him the needed confidence to come out here and did what he did tonight. Well, Gabe Vincent is someone who is not short for confidence. We know that if you're a Heat fan. Hopefully you are watching this version on the Heat Report channel. Uh, he is not scared to shoot the ball. I mean, he was shooting 15 to 20 times against Milwaukee, and he was doing it against the Knicks for better or worse. So Gabe Vincent is not scared of the moment, and he will not shy away from his shot. And I said in our preview of the series, if the Heat want to win the series, you will need a good Gabe Vincent. He was wishy-washy against the Knicks. Very good, very bad. This series so far, it's only been good. Lights out from the field today. 11 for 14 from the field. 6 and 9 from 3. 29 points. Anytime the Celtics tried to push back on this Heat lead in the second half, there was Gabe Vincent hitting a deep 3 to just push that lead even further. I think a big difference in this series, and there's a lot of things you can say about why the Celtics are down 3-0, but you've had role players on the Heat step up like Gabe Vincent, like Kayla Martin. You have not had that on Boston. Uh, you just haven't seen that. Malcolm Brogdon had no points tonight. Sixth man of the year had no points in this basketball game. 0 of 6 from the field. That just cannot happen. I mentioned the role players from Miami. Duncan Robinson, he had 22 points, two rebounds, four assists. Like you said, Miami runs on Duncan, man. He couldn't miss. Yeah, when Duncan Robinson is good, it adds another level to this Heat team because you bring that level of shooting that you see on your screen right now off the bench. Him and Max Struess. Struess, a good shooter. But when Duncan's right and Max Struess is right, Duncan is top tier 1% in the NBA. Struess is good, but not on Duncan level when both are shooting at their best. But the one thing Max Struess does better is defend. But you remember that five-year, $90 million contract Duncan Robinson got at the 2021 season, offseason, I should say. And he has not lived up to that contract, and he's been labeled as one of the worst contracts in the NBA since that big extension he got. Now, it is just inspiring to see him bounce back from barely being in the rotation, labeled as one of the worst contracts in the NBA, and now he is playing meaningful minutes, scored 15 against Boston in Game 2, had eight points in the fourth quarter in that game to help give the Heat that win, and then now dropping 22 at home, he could not miss from three in the second half once again. And it's just the story of the role players for the Miami Heat side. We look at this, we've shown three players on screen for the Miami Heat, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, and Caleb Martin. And what have they done? They've combined for 69 points. Math is math in there. 18 from Caleb Martin, 22 from Duncan, and 29 from Gabe Vincent. That is unbelievable that those three guys combined for 69 points. And you just mentioned that? Those three guys combined for 69? No Celtic had more than 14 points. None. Tatum had 14. Brown had 12. Those were your top two scores. Pritchard actually ended up with 12, uh, as well as Grant Williams. But how does that happen? This was one of the biggest games of Jason Tatum's career, Jalen Brown's career. Jalen Brown was 0 of 7 from 3. Tatum and Brown combined were 1 of 14 from 3. I mean, just an absolute embarrassment. And we'll get to more of my thoughts on the Celtics here in a second. But first, uh, your thoughts on Jimmy Butler here. Yeah, Jimmy just played this game how he saw it. He got doubled late in the second quarter, which really let that lead go from 22 to 15 at the half. 
because that Heat offense got stagnant at the end of the first half. Jimmy wasn't – he didn't have to dominate, though. When you have Gabe Vincent shooting like that, Caleb Martin shooting like that, and Duncan Robinson shooting like that, you don't need takeover Jimmy. And Jimmy has said it publicly that he doesn't even want to be the takeover Jimmy that we've seen against Milwaukee and New York because he thinks this Heat team is at its best when he draws the attention and it allows wide-open shots for Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, and Caleb Martin. And it's done that to perfection. The Celtics have no answer for this Heat offense because if they leave Jimmy on isolation, Tatum can't guard him, Jalen Brown can't guard him, Derek White can't guard him, Marcus Smart can't guard him, and we damn know sure Grant Williams can't guard him. So this Heat offense is giving massive issues to the Celtics. And I just want to give another shout-out to another role player, Max Struess. Didn't have the best shooting game, but I think he played great defense, hit a couple timely three-pointers in transition, and it just really helped this Heat team dominate this one basically from the start to the finish. The fact this that team was never in doubt for Miami. The fact that Jimmy Butler had 16 and he won this game by 26 tells you about the depth that Miami has. And the Celtics just laid an egg defensively and really just laid an egg from start to finish in this game. I thought Robert Williams did a decent job defending Bam. Bam, uh, in terms of scoring, the worst game he's had in a while, 13 points, three rebounds, two assists. Um, your thoughts on him pretty quickly. Yeah. If I told you before the game, if I told you if you're a Celtics fan or a Heat fan, that Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo combined for 29 points in this game, you would have expected the Celtics to win this game by 30. And right. the Heat won the game by 30. You get a combined 29 points from Bam and Jimmy, and you just won by 30. Credit to Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, and Caleb Martin. Those three have been super players all postseason long. Uh, Duncan and Martin off the bench. Vincent starting as Kyle Lowry's been coming off the bench. But my goodness, how good have this Heat bench been? And I called it before the series that the Heat bench needed to be good, and they had more depth than the Celtics. Some of y'all call me crazy, and I'm going to continue to just let you guys know that I am right and I know ball. Be sure to subscribe to both channels. We are closing in on 16,000 subscribers on Celtics. Heat Report just launched last week. They're trying to get to 700. So whatever channel you're watching this post-game recap on, be sure to hit that subscribe button below if you want all the best coverage here on YouTube on your favorite team. Shifting gears to the Celtics, uh, Jason Tatum, an absolute joke today. 14 points, 10 rebounds, 6 of 18 from the field, 1 of 7 from three-point range. Him and Brown, a combined 26 points, and Jalen actually got off to a good start in this game. Uh, Jalen started four of six from the field. Uh, then he went one of seven. He finished with 12 points, 0 of seven shooting the three. So those two combined were one of 14 shooting the three ball today. The fact that they combined for 26 points in a must-win game, down 0-2 in Miami. I, really, you needed both of those guys to show up here if you're Boston. Neither of those guys showed up tonight. Yeah, I really just... I'm really scratching my head here. I might, might do, I said it figuratively, I might do it like literally because I have no clue what the two Jays are doing in this series. You talked about it just a second ago. The biggest game, I would argue, of their career. I mean, I know they were in the NBA Finals last year, but you come back, you run it back this year, you add Malcolm Brogdon, who won sixth man of the year. We'll get to him in a second, but you have a better roster this year than you did last. So the expectations were high. You expect to get to the finals. Legacies on the line after dropping two straight at home to the eight-seeded Miami Heat. And you come out and throw an absolute stinker. And the two Jays, the two superstars for the Celtics, combined for 26 points. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown got outscored by Gabe Vincent alone. That cannot happen. And if you're a Celtics fan, you should be disgusted with how this team performed on the road and how these two Jays showed up in the biggest moment. It was it was just embarrassing. A start to finish here if you're Boston. And uh, Nick, I said in order to win this game, you had to come out. You had to uh, set the tone early in this game. You're down 0-2. You're on the road. Must win game or the series is over and your season is over. Instead, the Celtics... Got down eight at the end of the first, down 15 at the end of the second. They get down by as many as 31 in this game. Um, you're just sick right now if you're a Celtics fan. By the effort that this team showed tonight, they did not show up in this game. When you had to show up, 
You know what? In the fourth quarter in game six, seeding on the line, they showed up against Philly. They showed up in game seven. They did not show up tonight. It felt like they, they, they just already quit. And we've already mentioned the two Jalen Browns just being horrific and they looking disinterested out there at some times. The most alarming piece of this, and we've mentioned Malcolm Brogdon disappearing a bunch of times in our live stream, our Game 2 recap, and now our Game 3 recap. But look at these numbers on screen. Unbelievable. He won sixth man of the year, and he had zero points on 6 shooting. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Will. If you want to go back to the Game 2 stats, actually, I have them pulled up right here. But I believe Brogdon scored only three points in that game. Yeah. Malcolm Brogdon well, has yeah. been absolutely abysmal in this series. And it looks like he's lost all confidence with his jump shot. So he scored 13 in game two, but he was one of five from three. So last two games combined, he's one of eight from three. You're talking about the sixth man of the year. You're talking about your most reliable three-point shooter. And in the last two games, he is one of eight from three. No points for Brogdon tonight. I thought Brogdon had to make a huge impact tonight in order for the Celtics to win. He didn't show up either. But it's not just on him. It's on this entire Celtics team. And I will say this, because I'm seeing a lot of it on Twitter. What does this mean for Joe Mazzulla? And coming into the series, I thought Mazzulla's job was safe. I thought he's done a pretty good job considering the circumstances, taking over unexpectedly for M.A. Odoka at the start of the year, getting the two seed. Celtics were two seed last year, made the finals. Uh, getting them to the Eastern Conference Finals. But the way this series is gone, the way this series has played out, you got to wonder about Joe Mazzola's job security if the Celtics might look to make a move because we've seen some surprising coaches ch coaching changes uh, so far this offseason. Monty Williams fired in Phoenix. Uh, Mike Boonholzer fired in Milwaukee less than two years after winning a title. Doc Rivers most recently uh, fired in Philadelphia. That not as much of a surprise, but still a notable name. Uh, that has been let go. Nick Nurse in Toronto was shocking. You got to wonder about Joe Mazzulla's job security because if you have a championship window here for the Celtics and Jalen Brown doesn't re-sign, that window's closing pretty quick. You got some notable names out there that are available in terms of coaching candidates. Do you look to move on? I'm going to say no, but it's certainly more of a possibility than it was at the start of this series. I mean, it's absolutely a conversation. We'll circle this back to Game 4 and the rest of the series in a second. But on Missoula, you do have to think it's possible because Eric Spolstra with a less talented roster, and there's no debating that. I know the Heat role players are shooting like they're the 15-16 Warriors right now, but there is no debate who which roster is talented, and you're just seeing the difference between the best coach in the NBA with Eric Spolstra and a probably average coach in Joe Missoula. And listen, I want to give Missoula some benefit of the doubt because this is his first season coaching, and he was thrown into it two weeks before the season started because of the Emi Adoka situation. So I want to give him some slack, but you can just tell how bad he's getting out coached right now. He got out coached at times by Doc Rivers in game in the Eastern Conference semifinals. The Hawks even getting two games on Boston in the first round was a little bit of a joke as well. It's not a good look for Missoula. I think he stays just because he has to get the benefit of doubt of the situation he was put in, and it is his first year. Right. But I will say right. this, and you can agree with me or disagree. The only way I would feel confident if you're the Celtics moving on from Joe Mazzulla is if you were a thousand percent confident you could get Nick Nurse. I think he's the only clear, clear, clear upgrade. You can argue I think, Monty, I think Monty Williams would be you an can upgrade. You argue Monty, but I'm not okay, 100% confident fair. on that. That's fair. I don't think they should fire him. It, it's just a conversation that we're going to hear uh, because of the climate of uh, the coaching changes right now. Who wins the series? I don't really have much question at this point. I'm sorry, Celtics fans. Uh, I think this series is a wrap because no team in NBA history has come back from a 3-0 deficit based on what I saw from the Celtics today. It might be different if they had lost a close game, but they got absolutely blown out. If they didn't show up in this game, what makes you think they're going to show up next game uh, down 3-0? I think the Heat win this series. I was optimistic after game one. I was... Still slightly optimistic after game two, uh, just based on the talent on the Celtics team. They did not show up tonight. I don't expect them uh, to show up in game four either. Who wins the series? Type H for the Heat or C for the Celtics. Yeah, closing thoughts here, Will. If the Celtics do want to come back, what do you think their keys to doing that for game four will be? And I'll label them out for the Heat to close it out as well to finish the show. 
Just play with energy. Uh, they did not play with enough energy tonight. It was a disappointing performance. I thought the only player that showed up was Robert Williams. I really did. Uh, he was the only player that I was impressed with tonight. Grant actually had a decent performance as well. So the two Williams, and that was about it. Play with energy. Uh, obviously, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have got to be significantly better than they were tonight. Combining for 26 points in a must-win game on the road in the playoffs, Eastern Conference Finals, is an absolute joke. They got to go back to being the players that we know they're capable of being. If not, you can book those tickets to Cancun because this series is over. Yeah, and if you're the Heat, I think you just have to have the same mentality you had going into Game 3. You're up 2-0 after sweeping in Boston. You're feeling good about yourself, but you can't get complacent, and you have to act like you did in Game 3. I would say Game 4 must win. Why not act like it's a must for Game 1? Because if you do lose that game, then you go back to Boston in Game 5, and if they win on their home court, now it's going to 6, and now there's some doubt raising up in Heat fans' mind. There's a lot of momentum on the Celtics' side. So I want the Heat fans and the Heat players and coaches to still act like they're down 3-0. Act like they're fighting for their lives here in Game 4. Don't pick up your foot off the gas pedal. Keep pushing it down and pick up this win, and now you can have a week and a half rest of hopefully going into the NBA Finals. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you do have to keep on acting like this series is tight. Because if you act and you coast like you're up 3 nothing, things can switch in a hurry. So if I'm going to be a Heat fan and a Heat player, keep on working hard and act like you're down 3-0.